It is primary day, and today you decide. Whoever wins will go up against the sole Republican candidate, David O., in the race to be Philadelphia's 100th mayor. But if history tells us anything, the man or woman who wins today will be the favorite to win in November. This is our municipal election, so we're electing a mayor, uh, council, row offices, judges as well. This is the election that matters to the most folks that live uh, here in the neighborhoods, here in our city. These are the people that will determine what happens to us and our families in our everyday lives. The latest polling shows Helen Gim and Sherelle Parker, along with Rebecca Reinhart, neck and neck. Similar to other major cities with recent mayoral elections, one of the key issues in Philadelphia is crime particularly gun violence. It was a brutal weekend of gun violence in the city of Philadelphia. Nearly 100 rounds were fired, injuring five people. Seven people were shot in just a short period this weekend. Five of them have died. Philadelphia police have arrested three suspects in connection with a mass shooting on Tuesday. Guns have been used to kill 308 people in Philadelphia so far this year. More than 1,400 people have been shot in the city. Tonight, Urban Affairs Coalition hosting the Our Vote, Our Future mayoral forum right there in North Philadelphia. The forum focusing on top priorities for many residents, including gun violence. Gun violence is the most pressing issue facing our city today. And as mayor, I will work uh, starting on day one to tackle gun violence and make our city safer. The primary areas of gun violence are very limited and restricted. We know where they are geographically. They're not all over the city. Safe cities invest in their people. There's no question that what we need to do is lead a real investment initiative, starting with the communities that are most impacted by violence. We are telling young people that we value them and they walk out into filthy streets. They don't see green grass. Penn just produced a study for us affirming that there is a statistically significant reduction in the amount of violent crime in neighborhoods that are green versus those that are not. Every candidate believes they have the answer or the solution to help cut down on the city's soaring gun violence. But for those at the grassroots level already fighting the violence, they say Philadelphia is already in a crisis. One of the things that we have to do to really combat gun violence is what we do at One Day at a Time and at the Urban Affairs, to be honest with you, and my mother and father started. First of all, you gotta start off with love. And when you start off with love, you bring opportunity. One thing that we do here at One Day at a Time, we create opportunities for people after you love them, right? A lot of shooters on the street, they don't wanna hear the same old story from another politician. They wanna hear of an opportunity that's real. I voted for you, now show me the opportunity. Raise your hand if you have the homework. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself, all right? Yeah, I ain't trying to hear it. Tell me I left it in the living room. What up, you know? The dog ate it, the dog ate it. Who else was it, who else was it? It's crazy, I'm paying y'all to do y'all own homework. It's an investment in your life. If you don't do no homework, the world will work on you. You got what I'm saying? Tomorrow's motivational group will start at 9 a.m. Be there at 8.30, be on time. We have Rob, the governor, coming. He's from recovery. But please pass up your homework. Y'all can leave it up here for me. And Gio, we're going to read over it. So we came up with same day pay, Urban Affairs Coalition in one day at a time, where people can come in and work for four hours and make $100. So for four or five hours, they're doing something productive. And at the end of the day, they're getting immediate gratification. We need some immediate resources for the youth, because right now, they commit senseless crimes. And it's mainly because they don't really know how to cope what we know is that most of the shootings that happen in the city are a result of arguments. And I think it's incumbent upon the city to do something about that. One of the things I think the city can do about that is mandating conflict resolution courses within our public school system. I think a lot of times individuals don't know how to solve these issues and they feel very pressured to turn to something that they do know or they may have seen before. We have to remember that this is the largest poor city in the country and that our residents are pressured every day. Financial pressures, uh, societal pressures, and it all bubbles up. When I was 10 years old, I wasn't worrying about no gun. Usually you gotta worry about is you gonna make it to 18. Now it's like, is I'm gonna make it to 14? I was shot 17 times, took like nine to the back, three 
to my ribs. I broke three ribs and one pierced my lung. So yeah, I was in the hospital for a little while. I had to learn how to walk again. We have a lot of conversation about needing more cops uh, because some of our residents feel that if there are more cops on the street, they'll feel safer. But what we really need is to be able to clear these cases, to have more detectives that can work um, to solve these cases, and that way we will get the shooters off of the street. Sherelle Parker making her way out of that really wide field of Democratic candidates. It was Parker's campaign that focused on her established experience in politics, plus a key message of being tough on crime, hiring more cops, and pitching year-round public school. Now, I would love to have a relationship, not just myself, but people in the position that I'm in, to be able to speak with the mayor, because it's such a limit, like I, like I said, on resources for the youth where we have just a small amount of space for kids to actually come in and do something for the summertime. You know, the politicians, they out, they moving, but every day I'm affected by children that I can't help or people that I can't help because of the limitations and the roadblocks from things that we don't have access to. This, this department right here, part of the ex-offenders program, and we every day proof that how you start, not how you finish. No matter what we was doing in the community, Every day, y'all go out there and y'all make an immediate change and difference in the community. And we make our families proud. You know, y'all do a job that I couldn't come out here and do every day. So, you know, from me to y'all, one man to another, and I say, I say thank y'all and I appreciate y'all. Gotcha. Right. Thank you, y'all. All right, no doubt.